Hey everyone, I'm back with another House of the Dragon video. And today I'm going to give my review and breakdown for episode 7, Driftmark. This one pulled me right in from the start, with everyone gathered for Lena's funeral. It was fascinating to watch the exchanges between characters, much of it nonverbal. And you could tell we were in for a good ride in the, this one when Damon laughed during Vaemon Valerian's pompous eulogy. Vaemon is my least favorite character in the series. He seems like a dollar store Valerian when you compare him to those playing Corliss, Lena, and Lenor. He's the one actor who doesn't feel like a really good fit. So it was even more humorous for me when Damon laughed at him. And what Damon found so funny was the line, salt courses through Valerian blood. Ours runs thick, ours runs true, and ours must never thin. This is an obvious and inappropriate jab during a funeral at Rhaenyra and her children, but it also set the table for the main conflict in this episode. I felt some sympathy for Viserys. His health is plummeting, and he really wanted to have his brother back at King's Landing. Damon, at this point, has moved beyond seeking the approval of Viserys and wanted no part of it, particularly with Otto around. I love Damon's line to Otto, no matter how fat the leech grows, it always wants for another meal. I think after Lionel's death, if Viserys had called Damon back to be his hand, then he might have accepted that. But he's not going to be part of any council with Otto. And it's unfortunate, because Viserys really, really could use his brother right now. His faculties are continuing to diminish, and he really needs someone to trust. He was so bad off that he even mistakenly called Allison by the name of his first wife, Emma, as he was going to bed. As for Otto, I think he has a grudging respect for Rhaenyra ever since she arrived at Dragonstone to retrieve the egg from Damon. You could see at the funeral he noticed how well she handles her children. When she told them to go to bed after a brief protest, they obeyed her. This is a direct contrast to how Allison's been handling her kids. And what was nicely done was that after viewing Rhaenyra with her children, then we see Otto dragging a drunk Aegon back inside. Now I want to talk a little bit about the conversation that Rainey's had with Corliss. It was interesting because it was the first time that we've seen any real strife in their relationship. And we're both really wrong about a couple of things. First off, Rainey's really pegged Corliss there. He's the one that's so obsessed about her not having uh, ascended to the throne. She's long ago come to terms with it, but it still burns in him. And she recognized too that his ambition is what's really now leading to the destruction of their family. Corliss, though, was correct in pushing back against Rainey's idea of changing who was going to inherit Driftmark. It's supposed to go to Jace, Rhaenyra's son. But since he's not a true Valerian, Rainey's wants it to go to Bela, Lena and Damon's daughter. But doing so would be a complete disaster. People were already questioning who the father of Rhaenyra's kids are, doing this would just confirm it and further add fuel to the fire. In the last episode, I had some problems with how they ended Harwin and Lena's story so quickly, without enough development for them. This episode was the direct opposite and shows you how much better those payoffs are when you take the time to build them up. And there were a few such moments in this episode. The first is Rhaenyra and Damon getting together. This is something that the showrunners have been working towards since the series began, demonstrating the special bond between the two. Rhaenyra confronted him about having left her. Damon countered with her having been too young at the time. And then they both admit how their lives haven't gone well since they were apart. So it feels natural that the narrative has taken us to this point for these two characters. Previously, they showed us how Aemon was unable to claim a dragon. He kept getting rejected. He was teased. He was uncertain. Even during the funeral service, you could see him displaying self-consciousness. But then he finds Vagar. I'm going to do a separate video on Aemon and Vagar later in the week because I want to go into it more deeply. But this was such a great scene, one of the very best so far in the series. You could also see after it how Aemon changed. He had a new confidence that was just flowing through him. But then as a result, he foolishly got himself into a four-on-one fight and lost his eye. Viserys tried his best to mediate the conflict, 
between the children of Rhaenyra and Alicent, but as usual, his efforts failed. Besides, Alicent has directly told him she believes Rhaenyra's sons are not Laenor's, so why even bother asking Aemon where this rumor came from? But then Aemon mentions Aegon told him, and then Aegon, when pressed, just said, everyone knows. And I had a laugh at this point because Viserys was boxed into a corner and just shouted that we're family. He's just imploring them all to put it behind them. But this family, it's as deteriorated as he is physically. We had the long-awaited direct confrontation between Rhaenyra and Alicent. This scene was teased very early on in one of the first promos for the series. I thought at this point that maybe the King's Guard should have stepped in as Alicent raced at Rhaenyra with the knife. Perhaps they were too shocked at the moment, unsure what to do, when the two people they had to protect, the queen and the princess, were both going at each other. At the end of all of this, Aemond uttered one of the best lines of the episode, I lost an eye, but I gained a dragon. Both he and Otto thought that was a good trade-off. And it's not just any dragon, but the flying fortress herself, Vagar. Now we had a big surprise in the episode. In Fire and Blood, it said that Lenor died, but here, his death was faked. So this was a nice twist for those of us who know where the story is going. I expect even more of them in the future. I hope, though, that they let Rainies know at some point that her son is alive. I liked how they showed the old Valyrian-style wedding of Daemon and Rhaenyra. Vagar or not, I wouldn't want to be going up against these two. They'll be extremely formidable together. So I thought this was a great episode. It succeeded where episode six failed, providing the journey to the destination for key moments. Damon and Rhaenyra getting together, Aemon claiming his dragon, and Laenor escaping and being able to live his life freely. And who knows, maybe we haven't seen the last of Laenor in the series. This episode delivered. On content alone, I would give this one a 10, but there were too many dark scenes. So I have to push it down one notch to a nine. It'd be great not to need infrared night goggles to fully enjoy the show. Miguel Sapochnik directed this one. He also did another difficult to see episode, the appropriately named Long Night in the final season of Game of Thrones. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you're interested in more House of the Dragon content, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.